Today we're going to talk about the uh, digestive system and if you'll look in your lab guides on page 91 we'll just kind of go down and make sure you understand what everything is. Um, notice there's a difference between the alimentary canal and the gastrointestinal tract. Gastro means stomach so there's your stomach and intestines so the GI tract or gastrointestinal tract is just your stomach and your uh, intestines whereas the alimentary canal is the whole thing starting from the mouth and ending up way down here in the anus okay so it's that whole long tube and basically that's all the alimentary canal is it's just a long tube that goes all the way down curves all the way around and what you're doing is you're taking food in you're crushing it up you're breaking it into smaller pieces so that you can absorb things and then what you don't want you get rid of uh, as feces so if you start up here in the mouth you have what's known as the oral cavity that's going to be everything on the inside of your teeth so you have um, a buccal cavity, which is going to be the area between your cheeks and your teeth, but the oral cavity is just going to be what's on the inside of your teeth. Inside the oral cavity, you're going to have um, a hard surface on the top of your mouth or the roof of your mouth. That's known as the hard palate, and it's a hard palate because it's made out of bone. There's just a little layer of epithelial tissue um, on the outside of that. But there's two bones that make up the hard palate. You have the palatine process that comes off of the maxillary bone, and then you also have the palatine bone, which makes up the other part of the hard palate. Now, beyond the hard palate, you're going to have what's known as the soft palate. I'm going to look at this guy to show you that. Let's figure out which way we can take off his head. Okay, so there's your hard palate, which is made up of bone. Then you have the soft palate, which is made up of the uvula. And remember, the uvula is that little flap that just flips up. And so it's going to block off the uh, nasopharynx so that food doesn't go up into the nasal cavity. So you have that uvula. And then there's some skeletal uh, muscle tissue associated with that. Inside the oral cavity, you're going to have the tongue. The tongue is made up of primarily skeletal muscle. It's covered with little bumps, which are not really shown here, but all the little bumps on your tongue are known as papilla. And the papilla have two functions. The first function for the papilla is that they will um, help form friction so that you can break up and digest your food particles into smaller pieces. And then the second thing that they do is they house the taste buds. There's five different taste sensations and they're listed in your lab guide. You've got sweet, sour, bitter, salty, and umami. Um, and the taste buds are uh, distributed in the papilla and general patterns throughout the tongue, but we're not going to get into too many details about that. Also associated with this oral cavity, you're going to have salivary glands. You basically have three pairs of salivary glands. Starting on the outside, just below the ear, you're going to have what are known as the parotid salivary glands. So you'll have one here and then you'd have another one on this side. So there's your parotid salivary glands. Um, these glands secrete mostly a serous fluid um, and then you have underneath the salivary, uh, the parotid salivary glands, let me show it on this model because it shows it better, you're going to have the submandibular glands. Sub meaning under and then there's the mandible, that white bone there. So that would be your submandibular glands. You're going to have two of those, one on each side. The submandibular glands are going to secrete a combination of mucus and serous fluid. Then finally you have the sublingual glands. Lingual means tongue. So there's your tongue, so sub under the tongue, so there's a sublingual gland there and there under your tongue. So these are your sublingual glands and you always know that these are not endocrine glands because you see ducts coming from them. So if it has a duct, that means it's an exocrine gland. So all of your salivary glands are exocrine glands. Uh, the sublingual glands are going to secrete mostly a mucus fluid. Um, then also inside your uh, oral cavity, you're going to have your teeth. Um, that would be what separates the difference between the oral and buccal cavity. So inside the teeth is going to be oral. Between the cheek and the teeth is going to be your buccal cavity. Um, your deciduous teeth are your primary teeth, those are your baby teeth, those are the ones that fall out. Um, then you also have your permanent teeth, which are the ones that you keep hopefully for the rest of your life, not all of us do. Um, you have 32 permanent teeth, and the permanent teeth are labeled um, 
you, you have a numbering system here, so let me put his head back on so it'll make a little bit more sense. If you start on the right side of the mouth, on the upper uh, mandible area here, going around, this back tooth back here would be number one, and then you go all the way around to the left side, and that back tooth over here would be number 16. So when you go to the dentist and he tells you you've got a cavity on, you know, number 13, you'd go, oh, that's right up front here on the left side. Um, on the bottom uh, set of teeth, you go down, you start like 16's at the top, so then you go down on the same left side, that would be number 17, and then 17, 18, 19, and it goes all the way around to the right side to number 32. So that's how you get your numbering system on your teeth. Alright, on the teeth, you have uh, the, they have different functions and there's different uh, amounts of them. Starting in the front, you have the flat teeth that are known as the uh, incisors. These are flat and sharp, so they're made for cutting. You have four on the top and four on the bottom. Uh, then, moving away from those uh, teeth, you're going to have the canine teeth, and this model doesn't show it very well, but a lot of times the canine teeth are pointed and they look like canine or dog teeth. Um, you're going to have four canine teeth as well, so one on each side at the top and bottom. Then you have the premolars, which are also known as your bicuspids. Um, the premolars have more of a flat surface. Um, for grinding and chewing, and then beyond the premolars, you get into the molars, um, which you, you have 12 of these, and the back four are known as your wisdom teeth, and a lot of times people don't have wisdom teeth, or they don't come in, or they come in crooked, and you have to get them pulled out, but those very back four teeth, those are your wisdom teeth, and they generally don't even erupt until you're in your late teens, um, and sometimes even into your early 20s, but nowadays, dentists just go ahead and get you to pull them out unless they're coming in nice and straight. Um, if you look at the external tooth anatomy, um, on the outside of a tooth, sorry about this, you're going to have, um, that's a nasty looking one, but the outside of the tooth is covered with what's known as enamel. Enamel is the hardest surface in the body, and so that covers this whole outside surface of the tooth. If you damage the enamel, you're in trouble because enamel cannot be replaced. So once you get damage to this enamel, that's when we call it a caries or a dental cavity. Um, you have to get that filled in or it will just to continue to erode. And then that gets into that next layer of the tooth, which is known as the dentin. Uh, the dentin is more of a protein structure um, that kind of forms a pad for the tooth, kind of a, a cushion for chewing and grinding and the blows. So that's just kind of a, a bouncy pad. And then finally, the inner layer is known as the pulp and then the pulp leads down and goes into the roots and so like if you have a root canal they'll actually uh, drill a hole in the top of your teeth and then they'll just take little brushes and go in and clean out all the roots going through that pulp um, but those are the three layers of your teeth you've got the crown which is actually what shows okay so the the roots i'm holding the roots right here okay so the roots are under the surface of the bone that so the bone would come in here and it goes up against these roots, but the stuff that's sticking out, that's known as the crown, and then the gums are that soft tissue that surround the crown. And then you also have um, along the root, where the root connects to the bone, you're gonna have a periodontal ligament that joins the uh, bone to the tooth, and that's uh, solidified by cementum and your teachers should go over some of that, but that should cover all the different uh, aspects of the tooth. Um, moving down from your oral cavity, uh, food is going to be chewed up and ground up and broken into smaller pieces, and again, you're trying to break it into smaller pieces because you want to um, have more surface area for digestion. So you leave the oral cavity, and then you're going to go through the esophagus. So let's take this guy's neck off here. Um, so there's the oral cavity, and then we're going down into the esophagus. If you look in this one, there's your oral cavity with the tongue, and then food is going to go down into the esophagus. Notice there's another tube that sits anterior to the esophagus. That's the trachea. When you swallow food, you don't want food going down your trachea, so you have this little flap right here sticking up. That's known as the epiglottis. So that will close off when you swallow, and that will push food down through the esophagus. Also, that uvula will go backwards like that and close off the nasopharynx so that food doesn't go up into your nasal cavity. When you swallow, remember your tongue is going to push uh, up against the roof of your mouth 
after you've already, already pushed that bolus of food back to the back of your throat, and that's gonna push down here, and then you go into the esoph esophagus, which leads all the way down to your stomach. So, I'm gonna take this guy's guts out here. Um, I'll go, I'm gonna pull the liver out too. Um, but basically, there's your esophagus coming down right there, and notice it leads right into the this, uh, stomach. Your esophagus doesn't do any digestion. It's simply a transport tube that gets food from your oral cavity down to your stomach. Um, where your esophagus comes through the diaphragm, remember the diaphragm is that skeletal muscle that separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity, but where the uh, esophagus goes through your diaphragm, that's known as the esophageal hiatus, and oftentimes you will have this kind of loosen up and your stomach can actually kind of start to protrude through there, and that's what's known as a hiatal hernia. So you have this peristaltic action that pushes food down from the oral cavity down into the stomach. You've got a sphincter right here at the top of the stomach known as the esophageal or cardiac sphincter, and it is so named because of its proximity to the heart. So there's the heart, and so there would be the cardiac or esophageal sphincter. Um, this esophageal sphincter closes off when food comes in because you don't want that uh, contents of the stomach to be regurgitated up into the esophagus. Um, if you get the high acidity of the stomach contents going back up into the esophagus, it's going to cause heartburn and it can actually erode and uh, damage the esophagus because the, the pH is like a 2 and so you can cause uh, repeated bouts of heartburn can actually uh, damage the tissue and lead to esophageal cancer. So if you have a lot of heartburn, don't uh, dismiss it. Um, the reason that the stomach is not digested itself is because it has a specialized gastric mucosa which has lots of mucus cells that prevent the acid from di digesting the stomach. Notice also you're going to see a lot of uh, ridges or bumps inside here. Uh, these are known as rugi or rugae depending on what part of the country you come from. Um, but these, these folds are present when the stomach is empty and then as it fills that allows for expansion. Um, of the stomach. Um, at the base of the stomach, you've got another sphincter muscle here known as the pyloric sphincter. Um, and you can see that right there, the pyloric sphincter. Now the pyloric sphincter is going to open in just uh, rhythmic squirts and it's going to take the stomach contents after it's been churned up, you call uh, with the food that's been mixing around here with digestive enzymes, it's called chyme. And so this pyloric sphincter will open every 25 or 30 seconds and kind of squirt out a little bit of chyme into the small intestine. Uh, before we move on though, let's go back and make sure we know all the parts of the stomach. Um, if you just look at the stomach, the, this top rounded portion right here is known as the fundus. And then you have the main body of the stomach and then you have this little pyloric region here. So you've got the esophageal sphincter and the pyloric sphincter um, which open and close the top and bottom of the stomach. So you have fundus, body, and pylorus. Um, this big curve right here is known as the greater curve. This smaller curve right here is known as the lesser curve. When the stomach is hanging in here, you have um, a sheet that kind of forms a curtain of uh, membranes known as, uh, just the membranes in general are known as mesentery. But the mesentery that hangs off of this curve, and the, the greater curve, and forms a, like a curtain here, is known as the greater omentum. None of our models show that, but just know that that greater omentum kind of separates out and divides uh, the abdominal contents. Um, also hanging down from the lesser curve, you're going to have another sheet of connective tissue here of mesentery, and that's going to be known as the lesser omentum. Um, so that kind of separates where the, it, it comes between the liver and the stomach and hangs down back there. And this just kind of uh, partitions off the um, contents of the abdominal cavity so that if you do have some sort of infection or something, it's not likely to travel all over the cavity. Um, the next thing you come to is the uh, small intestine. And we can't find this guy's small intestine, so I'm going to switch back over to this guy's model. On the small intestine, this organ is primarily designed for absorption. This is where most of your food uh, substance is going to be absorbed from. So you have a special internal layer 